this is Andy too. And will you look at cute? Boy, she's uh, she's really stripped down here. <laughs> I've got uh, pretty much everything taken off of her, at, uh, except the the rods and shafts and gearing. And uh, I'll pro I probably I'll take that uh, tension unit thread guide and stuff off now that I think about it. But uh, in this video, I'm going to attempt for the first time to do some cleaning on a featherweight. And um, so keep, keep that in mind. And uh, there's a lot of uh, methods uh, I saw and read uh, online and in, in blogs and uh, YouTube and so forth. So I've uh, picked three that I was interested in trying. And that's what I'm going uh, to do first with the with the outside. I just want to do some testing uh, first to see what I think. Now this is a $50 featherweight, if you remember, and you can see that, um, uh, or maybe you can't. <laughs> see if I can get uh, that. Uh, a lot of the uh, uh, what do you call it, decals are are worn off and color change like they're they're silver like something uh, was used on them that shouldn't have been uh, the finish is uh, pretty bad with parts of it worn off and and missing and um, I mean there's not like chips and damages it's mostly just uh, see see how this looks right here how how this uh, lacquer or uh, I think it's lacquer, it's called, uh, you know, has has come off or had something put on it that, that took it off. And uh, so, anyway, that's, that's what I'm going to attempt here. And the spot I decided to pick was uh, where the motor sits. Because it uh, looks, com compared to most of the finish it looks like the least amount of wear uh, wear and tear and that kind of makes sense because it's you know where the motor sits here so it was dirty in here and I brushed it out and uh, wiped it out just with a damp cloth and that's where I've decided to do uh, my testing of these three methods is is here where I could kind of get a get a look at it and figure if I really mess something up it's gonna be under the motor <laughs> poor Lala <laughs> so uh, the first method that I'm gonna try is this original formula Gojo I saw a couple videos about this heard from a couple people about this and you know it seemed like oh that that seems like a, a pretty harmless way to go and it's not expensive um, I even saw one video where a guy's uh, kind of restoring old Singer machines and and he um, was taking off parts like needle bars and so forth and uh, rubbing them with this Gojo and putting them in baggies with some extra Gojo and letting them sit in there for a while. And uh, so I thought, well, that was interesting. But... Um, I did see a video of a couple of old uh, singers. I, I think it was Ray Elkins, if I'm not mistaken, that somebody sent me a link to a long time ago. And he had some pretty nasty looking machines that cleaned up pretty good. So, I've never done this. Uh, you know, if, if you have and you're not interested in this part, just uh, go down on the timeline at the bottom of the video and skip ahead to the next method if you like but uh, I figure I'm just gonna wipe some on here uh, I'm gonna leave it on for a little bit and uh, then I'm gonna wipe it off and I want to just see uh, you know like of course how well it cleans not that this part was that dirty but I'm I want to see if it does any harm to the finish Okay, so 
let me uh, let me do that and get that started. Another method that I was interested in was putting a cleaner wax on there. Now, if you've seen some of my videos, when I uh, restore a machine, I always go back after washing and drying it, and I do one coat of this cleaner wax to get any residue off of the paint. And then when I'm finished putting all the parts back on, I put an, I use this again to get off any greasy, oily fingerprints and stuff I've gotten on the machine. And then I put two or three quotes of Meguiar's uh, finishing wax. But I really liked using this cleaner wax on machines. And like my wife's 301, once a year I give it a pretty good tune-up and, and stuff. I don't take parts off and stuff, but I do give it a, a, a good cleaning and oiling and greasing and stuff. And I always finish with this and then a coat of the finishing wax. So anyway, while the Gojo is sitting here, I'm going to put some of this uh, Meguiar's cleaning wax in the next little bay or slot of where the motor sits here and uh, rub it around and when I, whoops, uh oh, messed that up that off of there. Now that's way too much for this little spot but I usually uh, put this on with a little applicator and then I would let it uh, you know dry and haze over and stuff and uh, then buff it off with a dry cloth Sorry, I got a little dry throat here. It's 113 today. We're like 40 some days now, over 110, a totally new record. I heard that in a few days it's only going to be 108. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. now, so that's method number two I wanted to try. And this Gojo is is getting a little. No, it's still wet. It just gets clear. It was interesting to me. It goes on white, but then it gets clear as it kind of, I don't know, melts. But the other thing I wanted to try was, was this cleaner I've been using for years that I clean the whole machine with and all my parts. And that's this uh, Crud Cutter Original Cleaner and Degreaser. Now this is concentrated in this jug. And um, for general cleaning, they talk about a 15% solution. And what's interesting is uh, after you clean something with this, say you're cleaning your stovetop, then it says you can just wipe it off with a dry cloth and you're done. So that, that you don't need to rinse it. Now when I use it on the sewing machine in, in the bathtub or shower stall, I always spray it off and rinse it very well, but that's not only to get any crud cutter off of it, but all the gunk that's loose, all the grease and stuff. So, but I had one time, I'd always told people in my videos before, I don't know how this crud cutter would work on a, a, a finish like, like this. So I always warn people, you know. So this is a 15% solution. It's basically in a spray bottle, 14 ounces of tap water and two ounces of the crud cutter concentrate, which comes out to a 14 point something percent solution. And when I use about a 15 or 20 percent solution, in the shower washing the machine I do the outside last uh, you know like like spray it and maybe wipe it down with a sponge or brush any bad looking spots and then rinse it and I try and do that within two minutes of getting the crud cutter on there uh, because it will start to 
a dull paint. And the very first time I used this crud cutter, I put it on a, a, a Singer 603, I thought, that was just filthy, and it's a white machine. And I bought it in a spray, and I think that is a 15% solution in the spray bottle. And I sprayed it down, and I let it sit like 20 minutes, and all the gunk was coming off. I said, wow, this is going to be great. And then I hosed it off, and it was clean. It was snow white. But the shine was all gone. Wow. <laughs> I had to go buy some polishing compound and stuff to try and get a shine back. So after that, I was very careful. Now, um, I, I'm timing this in the, back, in the back of my mind in case you're wondering, you know. When I've used crud cutter on the inside of the machine cleaning like the gears and stuff like that, um, I've used it as strong as 100% crud cutter uh, for those really bad uh, gears like on a 401 or the worm gear up there on, on a zigzag machine. And I've used it at 50% a lot of times and the same 15 or 20% when the machine didn't look too bad inside. And I'm watching my little uh, crud cutter 15% solution here to see if it's going to take off this uh, finish or anything and uh, let's just take a look at that got just an old t-shirt rag here and I'm just going to wipe that off make sure I get it dry And I see where it, where it damaged the finish. I definitely see that. I'm trying to see how I can get it in the light there. Yeah, so it did. It, it, it uh, softened up the finish, it looks like, a little bit. And kind of hazed it up. And looks like in the very center, when I rubbed it, it took it off down maybe to the paint. Um, so, which uh, I saw a couple pictures of alcohol damage on a featherweight, and that and it reminds me of how that looked. You see right that spot right there that's what I'm talking about so let's skip that eh? find a fresh spot here I'm going to go ahead and try and wipe up this uh, gojo and uh, see how that does when I was mentioning these other methods uh, I've seen where people just rub plain regular sewing machine oil like Singer sewing machine oil or lily or uh, something like that and they just gently rub it on the finish with their <clears throat> fingers and then uh, buff it off with a dry towel and uh, they, that's it they're satisfied with that now let's see how this gojo did For as long as I left that on there, it looks pretty good. I don't see that it damaged the finish the way the crud cutter seemed to have loosened the finish. And when I wiped it, some of it came up. Uh, this doesn't look too bad. I don't think I would have had to leave it on there because this machine wasn't that dirty. But it may, may have dulled just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm looking at it. Let me get let me get a little different uh, cloth here and just gently wipe that up. Make sure I get the residue of that gojo.
Yeah, I'd say it's not too bad. I don't think I would leave it on there. I think I'd uh, rub a little bit on and then I would rub it right off, I think, if I'm going to use that. Now let's see this um, cleaning wax. Let's see what it did here. Just clean that off, rub it gently and get that cleaning wax up here off. And let's see how it did. Mm-hmm. Okay, for me that left the best looking surface. Here's a damage where I can definitely tell it affected the surface. Um, this maybe dulled it just a, a bit. And the, and the wax uh, left more of a shine. But it still kind of looked like it affected it. I'll be darned. So, what's to, what's to do here? Let's take a look. Uh, I can see damage all around here. Can you see how rough this looks right in here? Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to try the, a little bit of the, and, and up in here too. And on the back side, of the head here looks pretty pretty dull some finished damage here so I'm interested to try a little bit right here and I think I'm gonna try that Gojo again but not leave it on as long as I did I'm just going to Kind of slippery stuff. <laughs> I'm just going to try and uh, uh, rub it on right there. Even this surface feels rough under my fingertips. Where where I, where I was doing it below where the motor sits, I didn't feel that roughness. So I don't know if I've got gunk on the surface here or if it's uh, affected but the roughness seems to be going away somewhat and so then I'm just going to wipe it up and then gently polish it a little bit this is just old cotton t-shirt uh, Hanes if anybody's interested <laughs> okay, and I, I I don't it didn't make it worse, but it didn't make it better. So I would say that's definitely in the finish, and that the um, mm, Gojo probably got off some dirt from the outside. Okay. So now up here I have the same kind of uh, poor finish. And I'm going to try that uh, cleaner wax again. And uh, this time I may not let it sit there and haze over. I might try the same... kind of thing here where I'm just going to rub it on for a few seconds right and boy a little bit of this goes a long way this cleaner liquid cleaner wax Whee! and then let me get another fresh 
cloth here and wipe it up. I'm still seeing a haze, so let me try and buff it up here. Okay, the haze is going away. But the, the damaged spots I see are still here. Mm -hmm. So it looked like it cleaned it. The, the Gojo and this uh, cleaner wax do look like they clean without uh, doing anything to hurt the finish, as near as I can tell. You know, but please remember this is not in any way a pretty finish or a pristine finish you know I, I know many of you have just gorgeous machines and uh, very pristine and you collect them and so forth you know so if you want to try something like this that's that's up to you I'm just trying to figure out what uh, and then here is still this rough looking spot here but I think I'm going to try the crud cutter one more time. This is pretty bad. So, and uh, let's see, how can I set it? I want to make it kind of level so I can get a drop on it there. That's still in the camera frame. Yeah, and then I'm just going to gently rub it, and then another clean cloth, and I'm gently going to buff it off. So you, what you saw there was very few seconds, right? Okay, and then let me put that bottle to the side here, and we'll see... Yeah, it still looks like it made it a little more cloudy right where I had it was rubbing it. So, crud cutter on the outside finish is definitely a no-go. No way. So, that is confirmed. And, uh... I think, myself, I kind of like the, uh cleaner wax because it uh, it seems like it's uh, well let me look around for another spot here oh this poor <laughs> that poor bed up here man you see that right there I'm sure can't you there's some scratches and very rough spots here so I'm going to just try putting a drop of oil. This is just plain uh, Singer oil. And gently rubbing it around on these two spots that uh, I could see easily. Mm-hmm. I'm just applying enough pressure to, to do a little bit more than spreading it. Just light, light pressure here. And then I'm just going to lightly pressure, wipe up that oil, and see how that looks. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, it didn't do anything to repair <laughs> the, the damage spots, but I would say it, actually that it cleaned it and uh, left it shinier than anything else I've used here so far in this video. You can still see the damage, right? But it did give it a little more depth of a shine than these spots down here. 
where I, I use the Gojo and I use the uh, uh, cleaner wax here. It gave it a little bit more of a shine to it right here. Mm hmm. Okay, so how about the front here? Where can I get anything in here? I'm just trying to pick a spot. I, I just never know how well this stuff's going to show up on camera there's some pretty pretty bad looking stuff right there <laughs> right <laughs> so let me put a little drop of oil there mm -hmm. and then I'm quickly going to put a tiny smidgen of Gojo on this end uh -huh. and I'm leaving a space there and I'm going to put a little bit of the finishing wax in the spot in the middle mm -hmm. Okay, good thing I made plenty of cloths for the video, huh? Cut up a whole t-shirt for this. <laughs> so, let's first take off this oil that I put first. And just gently, can you see, you can see the demarcation line there where I do not have any oil, right? See it? See it right there? Okay. So it didn't, it didn't, you know, it didn't do anything uh, uh, for the finish, but it, but it uh, cleaned it and it left uh, a little bit of gloss behind. Okay. Now let me take another clean cloth and I'm going to go over to the Gojo side and try and wipe it off away from the wax see and it it does a little bit of, of uh, let me make sure I've got it off of there it does a little bit of dulling in my opinion here can you see it see that now you can still see how it's darker and has a little more gloss here and and this does not <laughs> so I don't know about using this Gojo mm -hmm. okay let's uh, take off this cleaner wax then and see uh, how that is going to go not much shine there not like when I do a, a 301 or, or a 401 or 337 it's got a little bit you see it it's got a little bit Mm -hmm. okay now that I'm buffing it up it is not bad again it didn't do anything to help the bad finish but it cleans it and it's uh, leaving some shine behind the Gojo uh, does not <laughs> the oil you can see this demarcation here between the oil and the Meguiar's cleaning wax where I didn't put any kind of product you can kind of see these two are similar mm -hmm. and then the Gojo not so much 
Now I wonder if I put a little oil now on that uh, Gojo side. Now putting the oil on there did bring it back a little bit, but see that see it's still it's still more cloudy here. Mm-hmm. Another cloth. Mm -hmm. I got to say that uh, I like the oil the best just for this old machine. I uh, for, for ease of it and uh, how much I used and the results I got out of it I I like the oil the best I feel like it, it you know got gunk off it got any dirt or grease and stuff off of it and it left a pretty good result behind So I think I'm going to clean the whole outside of this machine with just sewing machine oil. And that I don't have much in here. <laughs> I don't have much in here, but I think I definitely I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and of course I'm not going to make you watch that, but I just thought I'd put a little more up here and spread it around. Goes a long way. It's just mineral oil, is all sewing machine oil is, unless it has some ad additives. Like, I don't think I would use the uh, Triflow oil that has the PTFE, you know, that kind of Teflon in it. I don't think I would use that. Just the pure mineral oil, just sewing oil, Singer, Lily, <laughs> something like that. Staying away from some of the household oils that probably have a lot of uh, additives and cleaners and anti-rust stuff in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do uh, the outside here with oil. Ta -da -da. I am liking that. What an easy solution that is, huh? Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to change this video, I think. It's taken so long. I'm going to have to call it uh, clean in the outside. <laughs> I had hoped to do some testing on the inside, but uh, I'm quite fascinated with this whole thing. So, so I think this will just be cleaning the outside. And I'll do another one for the inside. And I, I really, I had some dirt and uh, junky stuff up up around here from where the light fixture fits in and and uh, I wanted to see if just using oil really will do any cleaning you know so I I brushed it with that toothbrush I guess you you saw me and I just wanted to kind of wipe it down and see if that oil mineral oil will kind of dissolve the gunk and get it off get it onto my rag so it really does act as a cleaner not just a you know like putting shoe polish on a dirty shoe you know might shine it up a little bit but it didn't clean anything and it does it, it to me it took the the built up grime see I've got a I've got another spot over here by the feed regulator and 
on the on the back ear of the uh, bob and winder flange and stuff but it did it did do that so that's the Andy tube opinion I guess is I'm gonna clean the outside of Lala just with sewing machine oil and then my next video I'm gonna come back and see about cleaning this inside stuff uh, I, I have to tell you wow I just I really want to I really want to spray that crud cutter in there and get all this gunk out um, but even though Lala was only 50 bucks she is still a beautifully made machine and I'm expecting her to sew very well so I'm not going to spray here but I'm going to see about brushing and wiping out as much stuff and maybe using a crud cutter just on certain areas uh, wiping with the cloth or just a little bit on a brush so maybe you'll have time someday to come back and see cleaning the inside <laughs> of a featherweight at Singer 221 featherweight uh, thanks for tuning in uh, for this one and uh, I'm sure, you know, you're welcome to comment about how you clean your featherweight or other machine with this kind of finish, you know. There are a lot of people that read the comments on my videos to learn stuff. So those of you that have experience with that, you know, jump right in and give, give your ideas and your opinions if you like. So hope to see you next time and I hope it's a little cooler. I'm dreading thinking of my electric bill. Take care.